Well, good morning, Fierce Nation. It's Lisa Copeland in 15 Minutes of Fierce. I see everyone's jumping on. Hey, Anthony. Hey, Keith. How are you guys this morning? So um, I am missing the hat today because right after I get off of this, I'm heading to the airport and heading out to the West Coast. Duty calls. Um, and there's never, ever a problem with me doing business in Newport Beach. <laughs> When the client says, this is our headquarters, come out here, I'm like, okay, you got it. Jeff and Melissa and Faye and Dina and Sandy and Leslie and Michelle and Janelle and Sandy and Laura. Boy, I'm just going to get to the point where I can't even say all of y'all's names. All right, y'all. So we have been talking about what is your word for 2019? And oh, you guys have done so good at getting your words out and turning them into acronyms. And I can't even tell you how inspired I am. Hey, Renee, how are you? I'm so glad to see you're back in the fold. And Janelle and John and Laura. And um, anyways, so, so we were talking about, you know, what is that word and how do you turn it into an acronym? And then that acronym becomes an action plan. Well, I want to take it one step further today because that's what Fierce is about, is progressing us, right? Progressing us to hit those, those fierce goals in 2019. You know, is it about some motivation? Sure. But, you know, I think I've told you guys before, people when, when people hire me to speak, they're like, oh, are you a motivational speaker? I'm like, no, I can't motivate the unmotivated. I'm a speaker that, that puts action into place. I'm a speaker. I'm somebody, if I come into the organization, we're going to move forward. We're not just going to motivate because motivation wears off. It's like, okay, I'm motivated now. And then you walk out and it's like, okay, now the world has hit me in the face and I'm not motivated anymore versus having an action plan. And that's what your word is. Hey, Anthony, um, that's what your word is. Your word is your action plan, right? For those of you tuning in, it's Lisa Copeland. My word is fierce. And my acronym is fearless, imagination, enthusiasm, relentless, crush approval addiction, and execute. And, I, and I've committed to be fierce 365 days a year because success doesn't sleep. And I'm going to be unapologetic about it. Because I've lived in an industry and I've, I've, I've grown up in business where, where people, and even, even my own leaders, even my own leaders said, oh, you're too ambitious. Why don't you just put your head down and work hard? You know, stop reaching for the stars. You're, you know, you're where you're supposed to be. You know, and I never accepted that. I never have and I never will. So if you've got somebody out there and they're telling you, just put your head down, quit reaching for the stars, you know, stay where you're at. No, you need to get better. You're never going to be good enough. That's why I, I, I think that God has given us this, um, this, this yearning to be able to learn and to be able, and, and not everybody wants to do it. All of you do. That's, that's why you're up at 645 Central Time, 745 Eastern on this show. Ken Walls, good morning. Natalie, Nigel, Michelle, Dina, you know, and that's what, you know, so, you know, so we, we've talked about the word. We've talked about putting it into an acronym. Now I want to throw another challenge at you. Um, so yesterday I was with a client. And um, I was walking out the door and one of, a couple of the salespeople came out and they met me downstairs and they said, oh, you know, we're really glad you're here. And I said, oh, thank you. And this one young man, you know, 22 years old, and he'd obviously read my bio because he's like, I want to be a, um, a speaker and an expert and an authority, you know, and I'm, I was thinking, I've read this somewhere before, right? Anyways, but he was saying that to say, you know, his big goal is to be a motivational speaker. And, you know, I mean, and I said, well, you know, let me just, let me just tell you this right now. I found out that people don't pay to hear what you say until you have a story that people want to hear. People won't pay to hear what you say until people have a story, excuse me, until you have a story that people want to hear. And it isn't a story about, hey, I'm so great, be like me. It's really typically a story of how you've overcome all odds. So I challenged him. I said, I said, I said, write down your story, write it down word for word, like you were telling it to me and then email it over to me. But what is your story tribe? What is your story? You know, my story's never going to be that my team broke the world sales record. You know, that's great. That's a great story. Fiat's a small brand. It was, it was a huge accomplishment. Don't get me wrong. But the real story was that I knew that there was somebody in the universe that I wanted to meet. And that was the chairman of the board of uh, Fiat Chrysler Automobiles, Mr. Sergio Marchioni. And I knew, and, and so I found, and I knew that if I met him, it would change my life and it would change my career in the automotive industry. 
right? I was just this obscure Fiat dealer and Fiat was the smallest brand in the whole FCA family. So I was just this obscure dealer in Austin, Texas. And if I wanted to make my mark on the world, if I wanted to promote my platform, which my platform was to revolutionize the auto industry by empowering women, minorities, and millennials, that I would need to meet the man. And you would think as the number one dealer in the country, that would be easy to do. But Mr. Marchioni doesn't play, or he didn't. I'm sorry, he passed away about six, seven months ago. Um, he's a busy guy. I mean, he was the chairman of the board of Ferrari, Maserati, Alfa Romeo, Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Fiat, Alfa Romeo, worldwide. Busy guy. And at that time, he was also the head of the European Auto Union. And so I decided, so I made an audacious bet because I just, you know, I just kept hammering the head of Fiat brand, who's now the head of Jeep brand, Tim Kaniscus. I kept hammering him. What's it going to take to meet him? What's it going to take? You know, we're number one in the country. Why can't I meet him? And he's like, Lisa, isn't that, isn't that he doesn't want to meet you? He doesn't have the time. He's a busy guy. And frankly, you're just kind of like this, even though you're number one, you're this little dealer in this big network and not happening. So I came up with this audacious bet and, and the bet was to break the world sales record. And it, the, you know, the story at this point doesn't matter. But, but, you know, when I go and I speak and when I'm going out there and I'm telling the story, the story isn't as much about what we did to break the world sales record. It was about the fact that I decided the only way to take my career to the next level and to be able to promote my, my platform and get the, the respect of an industry was to, was to make this audacious bet. So that is my story. My story is about the bet and about the fear I had making the bet because it was very public. I mean, I announced it to Automotive News. I mean, it was out there. If my team didn't pull through and my team didn't do it, um, it would have been public, public humiliation because so many people knew about it. And um, so what are you willing to do to get what you want, to take your career, your business to the next level? But more importantly, how do you craft the story? You know, when I talk about that whole story and that and that that moment in time in my automotive career, right? I call it the bet. I call it the bet. It wasn't the we broke the world sales record. You know, I mean that's great, that's good, and no doubt about it. My my team crushed it. But that but that wasn't really the story. The story was the bet. The story was figuring out what it would take for us to do, to come up with a strategy to do it, to execute and implement at the highest levels. That's why organizations hire me. Why, why will organizations hire you? Why will you, um, how will you go to the next level in your company? It isn't gonna be because just because you're a great salesperson. I'm gonna tell you that right now. Leaders are built. You know, I don't believe leaders are born. I believe that they're built. And leaders are built by, by pouring into themselves, by, by making audacious bets and following through at every, at any cost at any cost to do what it takes to make sure that the team wins. And winning is going to be different for all of you. It might be money, it might be units, it might be prestige, it might be um, turning the company around. Hey, Heather, good morning, and Baron and um, Mabel. So I want you to think about, Tribe, what is your story? I mean, forget like the big story. What is what, is what drives you? That is your story. That is the one that if you were going to stand on stage and talk to 5,000 people, right? That is what will motivate people, is not what you did, okay? A lot of us have done a lot of really great things. I just get to tell you my story because I'm on camera. But a lot of you out there have done bigger things than I've ever thought about doing. So it isn't what you did, but it's how did you do it? How did you get there? What, what, what initially drove you to want to make that audacious bet? It wasn't just, oh, I want to be on the cover of Automotive News. It was that I wanted to put my platform on a national stage. You know, I was sick and still am for the record, sick and damn tired of women being second class citizens, both as consumers and as, as, auto, as automotive employees or lack thereof. And I knew I had to get the ear of somebody really, really important. And then I needed to get the ear of the press. And I will tell you, meeting Marchioni changed my life and it changed the trajectory of my career. It validated what I do and why I do it. 
It was a third party endorsement from the chairman of the board. I have a video that sits out on YouTube that he says that I'm the world's greatest salesperson. Google Lisa Copeland, Sergio Marchione. I mean, what, I mean, how, I mean, what, I mean, what do you do with that? It's the greatest endorsement I can ever have. It lives on and on, but I didn't even want it for that endorsement. I wanted it to get my platform out there. And I remember having that conversation with Mr. Marchione and I said, to me, the most important consumers in the world, you know, that 85% of or women influence 85% of all consumer purchases, whether it's automotive or it's healthcare or it's, you know, education, whatever it may be. But we're treated, especially in the automotive industry, as second class citizens. You know, and, and just to be able to have such a high level conversation. So what is your story? How do you craft your story? How do you get your story, your agenda, your platform in front of the people it needs to be in front of so that you can take it and you can explode? So you can take your business to the next level. So you can take your platform to the next level. Again, being the top salesperson in your organization, who cares? You know, who cares? That is not success. Learning to lead, learning how to really dig into yourself and find out what it is that drives you. See, all great salespeople, because we are big sellers out there, right? We're unapologetically fierce. Every one of you sells something for a living. But typically, what I find with the great ones, it's not always about the money. They do what they love and they love what they do and then the money comes. I can say that unequivocally for myself, unequivocally. I won't even get involved in an engagement or a contract anymore that doesn't stretch me personally, that doesn't entice me personally, because there have, I mean, it, it just, it, it can never just be about the money. Um, that name would break through walls, Anthony. Oh, okay, hi, and Rose, good morning. So what is your story? I want you to sit down today and over the next couple of days, and I want you to write out what it is, what your story is, that if you were on stage, somebody handed you a microphone and said, you've got three minutes, because that's about all we have as speakers. We, we, we have about 60 seconds to grab that audience. Um, what is that story, that elevator speech that you would give to that audience that would inspire them, number one, to keep listening, that's always, that's never fun, if you think you're losing your audience, uh, to keep them listening, and number two, that would truly be a benefit to them because that is the story that I want you to tie your word to. You know, if your word is belief, you know, are you successful? Are you moving forward today because of a belief system? I want you to dig really, really deep. Like I said, mine is the bet. It's just the bet. I've told it in the press. I, I mean, I still tell it to this day. You know, the story was in my previous book. It's going to be in my new book. And it's really expanded out in my new book as I've had the time and the bandwidth to be able to really think about what drove me to the bet. Again, my team killed it by, by breaking that record. And I'm so proud of them and I'm forever grateful. And, you know, it's awesome. But it really wasn't about the record as much as it was about the bet. I proved to myself making that bet that I had what it took inside of me to galvanize and mobilize and engage a team to do something nobody had ever done before. But it was for the bigger purpose. It was for the bigger purpose. It was for the fact that I wanted to revolutionize the auto industry. So what is your story? Uh, Danielle says, sometimes your story comes from hitting rock bottom. Absolutely it does. Absolutely it does. So that is my, that is my um, challenge to you today, is what is the story behind the story? And how would you communicate it in one minute or less? Imagine yourself, close your eyes, think about you're, you're standing on stage in front of 5,000 people who paid to be there, I might add. That's pressure at every level, trust me. They paid to be there and they expect you in 45 minutes to one hour to make their life better or their life or their business better for spending that time with you. Dig in tribe, dig in. Um, I will be coming to you live tomorrow morning from Newport Beach and um, I've got great respect for my friends on the west coast <laughs> because I will be up at 4:45 Pacific time doing this show but I've got so much more to tell y'all so I didn't I didn't want to bring in um, 
a substitute this time because um, I have more to talk about on the story. Anyways, I love you guys. I want you to um, share this out. I want you to continue to think about what your word is. I want you to, and you know what? Just because you came up with one acronym, you might change it seven more times and that's okay. Think about the, the word, the acronym, and how it ties to your story. How does that acronym tie to your story? Close your eyes, put yourself on stage in front of 5,000 people that just bought a ticket to hear your story. How will you inspire them? I promise you, that is what will take your business to the next level in 2019. Love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early from uh, Newport Beach, California. Bye-bye.